Okay, one of the important things that we really need to do in a molecular biology lab is to kind of understand DNA as a whole and also how we can manipulate it to really get what we want because ultimately we want to be able to manipulate the DNA, move it around from organism to organism and see what it can do. So what I've drawn here is this kind of an example of maybe an example of what I'm trying to do here. So here's a gene, what I'm going to call gene A, that I'm kind of interested in. So I want to study it a little bit more. But sitting in a chromosome is not very useful to me because that's a very complex entity. And my goal is to reduce the complexity. So I somehow want to remove gene A and then put it into a context where I can study it. So typically this may be in bacteria where I may want to make copies of it, then I can mutate it, do a variety of different things. So maybe I can just make copies here. I may want to put it in bacteria where I can express it. So if I have the ability to express it, this means I can make a protein. What that will then allow me to do is maybe study that protein and study its functions. But the important thing I have to realize is somehow I have to get it from here to here. And if you look at some of my previous videos, you can see we're probably going to take advantage of what we call a plasmid or a vector. So somehow I've got to take this gene A that's residing in genomic DNA, sitting on a chromosome. I've got to somehow get it out, put it into a plasmid, and then put it into my bacteria. Once I have it in my bacteria, I have the capability of making more copies of it, where I can mutate it, change it. Or I may be able to, if I put it in the correct plasmid, actually express it and make a protein from it. And this will allow me to study that protein. All right, so how do I get it out? So one of the first ways people have learned how to do that is to actually cut it out. This is going to utilize what we call endonucleases. All right, we found these. Endonucleases means it can cut within a strand of DNA. So let me draw that in pictorial form. If I've got a strand here, if it's an endonuclease, it can cut in the middle. So if I cut with an endonuclease, it leads to two products. An exonuclease, if I draw what an exonuclease is, If I've got one strand, it's going to act on the end and chew it away, nucleotide by nucleotide. All right. So both of these types are actually found in cells, endonucleases and exonucleases. So once again, an endonuclease is going to cut within a strand, so it can cut between the two double strands, and it lead to two strands if I cut once. An exonuclease has a different type. It's going to start from an end and then start to chew it away. In the lab, we really like to use the exonuclease. We see these because bacteria are really good at making these, and we call them restriction enzymes. Or sometimes you uh, see them referred to as restriction endonucleases. These were devised by bacteria or prokaryotic cells to restrict foreign DNA from getting into them. So they get attacked by bacteriophages. The bacteriophages try to introduce their own nucleic acid to them. And the bacteria is saying, hey, no, I don't really want you. And so they have developed enzymes that can chew those, that foreign DNA apart uh, to prevent it from being worked. So it prevents that bacteriophage or that virus from infecting it. Right. But we can utilize these restriction enzymes in a lab. And the reason we can is because restriction enzymes cut at specific sequences. This is really important. So there we can find a different enzyme for a particular piece we want. So the goal here is if we can find restriction enzymes that flank our gene, we can actually excise it. We can cut it out. And based on what we know about plasmids, if you remember or look at my video, is there's a multiple cloning site. Remember the MCS. And these are filled with restriction enzyme sites or restriction endonuclease sites. So as long as I find restriction enzymes that flank my gene and that match up 
with my multiple cloning site, I can pop that gene out here and insert it into the multiple cloning site. Once I have that capability now, you can see then I can replicate it in the bacteria. I have my selective marker. If you remember, I have a gene that produces a protein that allows it to grow in the presence of an antibiotic. I can now move that DNA, DNA around and have copies of it. And then I can utilize it as I please. But the whole point is we take advantage of this endonuclease ability. Find sites that flank the area that we want, excise that gene, insert it into our plasmid, and now we can work at it. So the question is we need to learn a little bit more about endonucleases. Let's learn a little bit more about restriction endonucleases. What's kind of unique about them is they cut at what we call palindromic sequences. What that means, if you remember, it can be read both directions. In DNA, this is referring to the two strands. So remember DNA has a five prime side and a three prime side, and on the other strand is opposite of that. We call that anti-parallel. So what we're saying is it can be read in one direction on the top strand, and it's the same on the second strand. So an example of a palindromic sequence in terms of DNA is G A A T T C. So if I'd put my 5 prime here and my 3 prime here, on the opposite strand in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, it's going to be G A A T T C. So here you can see the G A A T T C and the G A A T T C. So all restriction enzymes cut at what we call palindromic sequences. So this is very useful. It allows us to find them if we have a DNA sequence. All right. Now one of the things or the mechanisms it does when it's cut is most of them do not cut right down the middle. They cut offset. So if I kind of draw this G A A T T C again here, five prime, three prime, three prime, five prime you're going to see here that it's not going to cut evenly. It cuts offset, so it's going to cut here and it's going to cut here. What that leads to is essentially, if I draw it in cartoon version, is this. It has what we call a five prime overhang. This is useful because now what we have are what we call sticky ends. So these ends, remember there's nucleotides sitting here, and so if they match up with their complement, they will stick together. And because it's the five prime that's overhanging, we call them typically five prime overhang. Now most nucleotides do do this. There are some that do cut blunt, so straight through, but the ones that we typically will take advantage of in the lab are ones that are uh, create sticky ends. All right, so once again, the, the endonuclease, it can cut within a strand. It cuts at what we call palindromic sequences, so they can be read in both directions, and that's referring to the two strands. Typically when they cut, they, uh, pr pr they create what we call sticky ends because they have a five prime overhang. Uh, in a subsequent video now, I'm going to show you how we can use these then to glue pieces of DNA back together. So the restriction endonucleases allow us to do our cutting. Now what we have to also be able to do is paste them together so we can put them into our plasmid, which is over here.